great. From the perspective of disputes, international water law as a basic regulatory setting is in itself a means for preventing and eventually settling transboundary, transboundary water disputes. I mean, the sheer fact that you have international rules pertaining to competing uses of transboundary waters may considerably contribute to providing the language for discussing, for disputing, without really having uh, escalating conflicts. Nonetheless, international water law regulatory settings of the kind as we have in the UNECE Water Convention and partly also under the New York 1996 Transboundary Waters Convention, Water Courses Convention, provide for proper dispute settlement mechanisms ranging from traditional adjudicatory systems, International Court of Justice or arbitration tribunals. The New York 1997 Convention has a peculiar system of compulsory fact-finding mechanism, whereas the UNEC Convention has recently established a different peculiar alternative dispute settlement mechanism that revolving around a new established institution the Implementation Committee, which is more of a ad non-adversarial, non-confrontational and more advisory orientated uh, approach to situations in which the states parties to this convention in envisaging and creating this institution are fully aware that in international environmental law, like in situations where transboundary international water law is concerned, states may find themselves in situation of non-compliance not so much out of their political will to infringe upon international law, but rather in situations of lack of capacity. That explains the advisory role in which when a state is involved in a situation of difficulty may resort to this body in order to ask for advice on legal and administrative difficulties, uh, technological difficulties and technical difficulties that explains, accounts for the composition of that body which is partly made up of legal experts, we are three experts there, and six scientific experts that may come to the rescue in, in, in providing for possibly the right answer for those states who have problems individually, jointly, they, you may have one water course states resorting to the Implementation Committee or two states together and that is the most advisory role that may be performed by the committee whereas more contentious situations may arise and be brought before the Implementation Committee uh, in which you have a state complaining about uh, another state allegedly in a situation of non-compliance. But despite this more adversarial background, the means that may be used by the Implementation Committee are of a more friendly and possibly a conciliatory nature than an international arbitration tribunal or the International Court of Justice. And this is of course without prejudice for the interested states to later resort to international arbitration or adjudication. And in all this, the activity of the Implementation Committee would eventually be complemented by the more political role that will be performed by the meeting of the parties uh, as a whole, as a, as a sort of uh, community, community within which the individual states involved may be then brought to keep in appropriate consideration the advice that would come out from 